The second coming of Christ is referenced many times in scripture with over 1,500 passages in the Old Testament and one out of every 25 verses in the New Testament mentioning the Messiah's return. The large amount of material devoted to this important event underscores what God says in Amos chapter 3, verse 7. Surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. In short, the return of Christ brings about what is referred to as the kingdom of God in Scripture, God's absolute rule over his creation, including humankind. To accomplish that, Jesus ushers in two different judgments, two different resurrections, and two different eternities. When Jesus returns, he will be ready for war, Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 16. The nations will be gathered to fight against Jerusalem, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 2, in what we call the Battle of Armageddon. But that will be the day Jesus returns. His feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, forming a great valley, with half of the mountain moving north and half moving south, verse 4. It will be a unique day in the history of the world. On that day, there shall be no light cold or frost, a unique day which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night, but at evening time there shall be light, verses 6 and 7. God's enemies will be defeated, and the Antichrist and the false prophet will be thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. Jesus will set up his kingdom, and the Lord will be king over the whole earth, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 9. In establishing his kingdom on earth, Jesus will first set up a judgment for those who are still alive after the tribulation and are on the earth at the time of the second coming. This is referred to as the judgment of the sheep and the goats, or the judgment of the nations. Those who survive this judgment will remain on earth and enjoy a time of peace and prosperity with Christ for 1,000 years, referred to as the millennium. Those who are found guilty in this judgment are cursed and consigned to the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Satan is bound and forbidden to act during the millennium. During this time, there will also be a resurrection of all believers in God. These resurrected believers will join believers who are alive at the time of Christ's coming and those Christ brings with him from heaven. And all will live with Jesus during his 1,000 year earthly reign. What happens when Jesus returns? Evil is defeated. The earth is restored and God wins. Your response to Jesus' return depends on your relationship with him. It will either be, as John MacArthur calls it, the greatest calamity in all of human history or the fulfillment of the blessed hope. Faith in Christ makes the difference. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on earth who have faith?